Are you looking for a way to teach speech to someone with autism? Inner Voice Autism Language and Literacy Tool communicates for those who cannot speak for themselves. It provides a model of speech production, teaches how to speak, recognize, and display emotions, and provides self-monitoring for written language. Inner Voice combined with MyScript Stylus turns written language into spoken language with the ability to express emotions. Bye now and tell your friends. We are now here with the inventors of Inner Voice. We have Lois Jean Brady, who has over 25 years of experience as a practicing speech language pathologist. And she also is, uh, holds a certification in assistive technology and her partner, Matthew Gugamos, who also is a speech language pathologist and professional inventor and father. And he specializes <laughs> in treating autism spectrum disorders. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome for having us. Thanks for having us. We're thrilled to have you. And you've been on the show before to talk about inner voice, but we always invite you to come when, when you've got something new that's going on. And we understand that there, there are new things going on. But let's, let's start for people who haven't seen us. Talk about why would you create an app uh, for voice when, when there are other ones that are out there, right? Yes, there are. There, there's plenty of apps on the market. Um, and, you know, Matthew and I both work with um, children with autism on a daily basis. And what we realized is, oh my gosh, these kids um, weren't using them. They weren't working for our kids with autism. Um, so, well, what was working? So we, we took all the things we knew that were working, took away the things that we knew weren't working, and we created Inner Voice specifically for kids on autism to, to get their attention, their engagement, and their motivation. Which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, how is how is yours different, and how does it achieve that? Well, um, one of the things, well, the main thing is that it uses um, avatars to um, represent speech. You know, or uh, basically, these avatars are made through pictures of the user. And so, what that does is that it, it kind of uh, replicates how all people pretty much learn to to speak, which is watching other people speak. So um, we can; these pictures can be um, uh, a cartoon or a drawing like this, or they can be a photograph of of a, of a child like uh, you're displaying there. And this is how well all human beings throughout the world learn to speak. They watch their parents speak, they imitate it, and then learn to imitate in social context. So that's what that's basically the reason that we took that uh, model um, to to make natural language learning be applied to what appeals to kids on the autism spectrum using tablets, which is an evidence-based practice. I love this, you guys, I gotta say. I mean, and the fact that it can be a cartoon, a real person, mm -hmm. or an animal mm -hmm. is just absolutely brilliant because different kids respond to different things. Right. Um, can, can you demonstrate for us how inner voice can narrate social stories without confusing pronouns? Absolutely. Um, Matthew has a great story of, tell him the story about the kid on the bus, the student on the bus. Oh, he was, uh, this you was, know? I remember he was doing something he shouldn't have, you know, and so the, the, the social story was uh, telling him, well, just how to be appropriate on the bus. And so when I'm reading it to him, this was about 10 years ago, this was before we had come up with the app, I'm reading it to him saying, well, when I'm on the bus and I want to, I don't know, get in other people's space, then um, I should keep my hands to myself. I'm thinking, well, I'm talking about myself. Does he realize I'm talking about him? Because if I'm talking about myself, he might be agreeing that I shouldn't be doing those things and not applying it to himself. So um, we, we started thinking, well, how do you get someone to really internalize a social story with the appropriate pronouns with, without kind of resorting to having to read um, them out loud and assume, and especially for kids who can't read, you know, to, for them to assume that we're talking about them. It gets very abstract and sometimes we found it didn't sink in as well as uh, you know other approaches so Lois has an example here so um, you take the picture of the student um, in this case we're not going to use a, a cartoon because the student is going to be talking about themselves and in this case we're just going to use um, the little girl that comes with the app there's some preloaded avatars and I pre-created this little story um, about her getting on the bus. So you open it up, and here she is. I need some updance. I ride the school bus to school. Okay. 
I need some help dance. I ride the school bus oh. to school. I wait patiently. You had something on your first <laughs> First thing you're always going to want to do is make sure it's on auto erase. <laughs> and that's just in the settings. There's always something that goes wrong every single time with any app you use. So you go to auto erase and you turn it on. Okay. Yeah. And now we'll, we'll hit it again. I ride the school bus to school. I ride the school bus to school. I wait patiently to get on the bus. I wait patiently to get on the bus. I sit down and buckle my seatbelt. I follow directions from the bus driver. So now there, there, your student is telling themselves how to act on the bus. And again, I just put that together from um, pictures I pulled off the web. But what you're going to want to do is go take actual pictures and really make it concrete for the student and um, relative for them. I, I, I think it's so clever. Yeah, it's very clever. so clever. Because, uh, you know, the fact that the avatar's mouth moves to such a clever thing. We, I, I honestly, there, there was one of those silly little apps with the cat that mm -hmm. talked. Mm -hmm. um, and my son was so attracted to that and that really, really helped him. If I had been able to put his head there mm -hmm. with talking lips, oh my goodness. What, a, what an exciting yes. thing, you guys. Um, okay, so it's such great technology, but why did it take more than five years to develop? What was that about? <laughs> well, well, we, um, we, we, we had to raise money, so we wrote grants. We got grants from the National Science Foundation, Autism Speaks, um, New Schools in Ignite, and then we created, a, as Matthew calls it, our duct tape version. So we part and pieced it together, and then we go out and try it. We have, you know, many students on many different levels, and we try it. So this didn't work, and we threw that out, and we brought something else in, and it really took just the research and development and five years to finally get it to this place where not only do the students use it and are engaged, but the parents. There is no real big learning curve for parents. We, we tried to mirror um, the iOS system. So when parents open it up, it's familiar to them. There's not a lot of training that needs to be done. They can kind of do it on their own. Um, but if they need help, there's, there's, of course, manuals on the website and, and tutorials. But we wanted it to be easy for everyone around. And it just took that long to really tease it out, to, to get research, to survey, survey monkey. Um, we did a lot of customer yeah. discovery. Mm -hmm. And we finally had a place where, oh my gosh, I think this is it. <laughs> so is this, is this it then? This is the final version? We'll, yeah, we'll keep moving and moving and, and moving. Is, is our, our idea is why should this, our students that we work with use technology that was made 10 years ago? Now, when I got in the field, all my kids had old technology. They're using the old things that everyone was already done with. Our idea is to take, well, what is emerging right now? Let's put it into our app and let's be the leaders in technology rather than having special needs students always be the followers. So we're, we're always going and watching to the CES in Las Vegas every year. What's new? What's coming up? And how do we get our kids using it first? I love um, it. So no, this is not the end. This is just a place where we're happy right now. <laughs> okay. I like that. And we're going to sit here a minute and, um, yeah. And bask in the wonderfulness. Right. But where do, we, where do we get it? How do we get it? What does it cost? All of that good information. It's on the Apple App Store. So you get it like you get any other app. Um, it's currently a one-time price of $19.99, which, again, is only a fraction of what some of the other apps are on the market, if you're familiar. But, again, we did get lots of grants from the government and private industries, and we were able, that was one of the pain points for parents is, I want to get something for my child. I can't afford it. So we've, we've lowered it to that price for um, Autism Awareness Month. So we're trying to keep it at a low price just to, go, to let people uh, learn about it and to try it um, and, uh, uh, you know, get more people uh, the opportunity to put it on their devices um, so that they can see how it works for them. Okay. And, and there also um, is research. This is evidence-based. Talk a little bit about the research for us. Well, uh, we, we did, uh, we've got a kind of several layers of research we did with <laughs> it. I mean, so the first is um, through our, uh, we, we received the National Science Foundation grant through SBIR. So that's, it's a, a, a form of uh, seed funding through the government to um, apply 
uh, um, research into technology that uh, consumers can use. And so what we did is we studied actually something called, uh, we called it synthesized emotional communication. So we wanted to figure out what components have to be part of, um, of, of an exchange between a sender and a receiver. That's what always happens when, you, when you're communicating. Someone's delivering something, the other person's receiving it. And if you wanted uh, um, to send emotional content, like happiness, sadness, anger, maybe even neutrality, what has to be part of that? So what we studied with the NSF is, um, is it only a voice with um, something they're called, it's called super segmental. So those are, these are the ups and downs of your voice pitch, the emphasis in certain words, the, the um, how loud you're speaking, the rate you're speaking. So is it just that, that you can just tell how someone's feeling only through speech alone? Is it only facial expressions, or is it the combination of the two? So, not surprisingly, and then we, you know, fed this into a statistical analysis, and we found this is just like how human beings behave. You need someone's face, and you need someone's tone of voice um, to give context to both the tone of voice and the facial expressions. Because I could be smiling and saying something not nice. So, just because I'm smiling doesn't mean I'm saying something nice. So, well, we and we studied that, and uh, that that paper got accepted by the NSF. And we published those results that they're going to be published in an um, online uh, magazine called Sciencia, um, uh, like next month. So that's one aspect. Um, Lois talked about the customer discovery. She can tell you about that. The customer discovery, and I think um, you were asking also about the evidence-based practices. Um, and out of the, the 27 evidence-based practices, we fall into 10 of them. Um, and I think probably the most important one that we do fall into is the video modeling and the video self-modeling. Those are really powerful evidence-based practices and tools for teaching students on the spectrum in particularly how to accomplish a goal, how to act in a social situation, certain behaviors, so you can put in their face and when their face tells themselves either what to say, what to do, how to act, it becomes really important and really powerful to that student. And um, believe those things just, I don't want to say magically happen or anything, but they really happen. It's, it's incredible to watch a student who won't go on the bus and you put their little face in there saying, it's time to get on the bus now. Um, and they go on get on the bus. Mm -hmm. Wow, that works, that's pretty powerful. So it's that video self-modeling and just showing them rather than telling them. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know that the visual strength is so much more um, powerful for kids on the spectrum right. than auditory. So right. It's showing them, not telling them. Okay. Right. Remarkable. Well, so on the App Store, right now for April, correct. if people go and get it right now at the App Store, at $19.99, when you think about the things that we buy and spend for right. our kids and the ability to have them engaged and excited mm -hmm. and learning and and fostering speech, I don't think you can beat it for $19.99. No, you can't. So that's remarkable. Thank you guys Thank so you. much for all the work that you've put in on this and all the time. Congratulations. And yes, congratulations.